welcome back to Carlis. So today we're going to explore a little bit about cars that are under RM20,000 um, because not everybody likes to take a loan so they've saved up maybe around 20,000 ringgit and they want to buy a car. So what cars are out there that will be good for you? Um, so I'm going to try to pick five that are just completely different um, so that we can have a range of cars for everybody. So let's get going. So the first one we have on the list is the Audi B6. Okay, all right. I know when we talk about Audi, everyone just goes, Oh no, aren't they going to break down? Aren't they costly to repair? Well, actually, the B6 is a very sturdy car. Okay, so the reasons why I like the B6 is because it is a really classy looking car. Even up to now, it just looks really classy. And if you've never experienced Audi before, the interiors are one of the greatest interiors put in a car. They just last a long time. And I'm sure if you look at some options, of the B6, the interior still looks immaculate. Uh, the B6 was a big jump up from its previous generation, the B4, in terms of uh, everything really. Plenty of uh, room inside, safety kit, and it's got a real good 1.8 liter turbocharged engine that's really up to date with how modern cars are moving. I mean, it's got a lot of torque, it's got a good amount of horsepower, but really with the A6, you're really buying a car that's just classy looking and it still feels up to date to me. So if you really want a limousine, cruiser, classy looking car for R uh, under RM30,000 ringgit, you should really look into the Audi B6. There's uh, a few options out there and yeah, if you can find one with a complete body kit, it just still looks mean. Yes. It's not going to be the fastest car, but it's still got a lot of power, but it's it's more about how you want to feel like premium inside for a cheap amount of money. All right, the next one, we have the BMW 3 Series E46 uh, model. Okay, what can I say? When I first saw the E46 after seeing the E36, it was a bit like, eh, not sure, it's a bit roundy, it doesn't look so aggressive. But you know what? They've grown gracefully and it just looks really, really good now. It's just weird. I mean, how it's just aged very, very well. Plus, with the E46, you have so many different uh, engine options from uh, uh, low, uh, I think it must be like three or four different engine options with the with the E46. You can go for a economical, you can go for a sporty one. It's it, the, the range is uh, a big out there, and since there's a lot of um, workshops and following of the E46, it's easy to maintain them. Um, but so this is completely different from the B6. It's a more sportier sedan. Um, it's also a four door which what most people like these days. So yeah, if you like that sporty drive and you don't know, want to have a bit more of engagement, then yeah, choose the E46 over the B6. Um, the, the interior doesn't last as good as the B6, but there's still some good, well kept after E46 in the market. Um, yes, um, yeah, a lot of them have been like um, lowered and all this because it is an enthusiast car um, you know but there are still out there good examples out there that are just kept stock and just will ride nicely whilst giving you a very very good handling car so yeah it, it's up to you really you can turn it into a family cruiser you can turn it into a weekend warrior that's totally up to you but that's that's the e46 it's such a chameleon it's looking good these days and uh it's aged really, really well. I never thought I'd be saying this, but yeah, it's aged really, really well. All right.
right, next up for something a little bit more different for those who like adventure, should we look into Nissan's first generation X-Trail? Okay, let's start off with a lot of police forces around the world like to use this car, well, did like to use this car and many of them had them in their fleet. And one of the reasons is because they are just built really, really well and they are just robust, they never really go wrong. And I think one of the most interesting parts of the X-Trail compared to its competitors from the same age like the CRV and all the rest is that it's got a all 4x4 mode which means it can select between 2-wheel drive, 4-wheel drive, 4-wheel lock so this was something really different and yeah, the, the CRV had all-wheel all, all drive but none of them really had this kind of like low range like a, like a pickup truck so for those looking for a um, budget adventure vehicle yeah you can you can try getting one of these um, you can raise them and you know and it's, 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 it's different from the rest of the SUVs which is probably why a lot of people like to have them in their fleet back then like the police um, yeah it's got a 2.5 4 cylinder engine 177 horsepower um, yeah it's, it's, it's like, it's, like I said, it's, it's not about speed because there's a lot of faster cars there but it's just so versatile and because it's got like this really boxy shave not so curvaceous it's got a lot of space so if you want to go camping you can just stuff a lot of your gear inside and yeah, and generally when we look uh, in the market that a lot of them have been well kept too so I think not a lot of people use the four-wheel drive system so best check that when you're trying to look for an extra just play around with it see if it engages or not because if these things are not used they can go wrong so but knowing in Nissan's reliability they're, they're, they're really good so yeah for not a lot of money you can get a really good cheap budget um, adventure vehicle yep So we've had two excellent sedans, we've had one uh, SUV that's good for adventure vehicles. So I guess the next up is the um, MPV. So we were looking for an MPV, it was just hard not to beat the Exora CPS. Okay, yes, it's a Proton and it's our national car and it was built ground from the ground up. You know, this was a completely um, true through and through Proton product. And okay, yes, it's it's not the most powerful in the world. It's, it's not the CF Fusion where it's got a turbo, but you know, it's still okay. You know, it's 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 not so refined, but you know what it is. It's a car that can provide a lot of space for you and your family comfortably. And when we're looking through the list of cars available in the market, all of them seem to be in really good condition so if you want an MPV that's the cheapest out there that's most probably going to be reliable most probably because power window yeah. but you know if you're looking for an MPV on a budget and it's just really hard to just not look at the XOR CPS they are going from 18 to 20 and it's 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 it's, it's good car you know it's got faith Proton's famous uh, suspension tuning, so it's stable at high speed, um, and the engine no noise is quite loud, but it's it's okay. You know, you you can you can put some insulation here and there. What people like to do in Malaysia anyway. So yeah, I mean, also the CPS was the at the time where Proton had gave it more airbags. Now, if you want to buy a new Exora, you only get two airbags. I think now the, the previous Exora they had four so yeah it's, it's safer too um yeah but mostly it's just really really spacious inside the, this you don't feel like you're cramped in one of these modern modern uh, uh subcompact uh, uh mpv so i mean like guys for like 18 20 000 you're getting a really really spacious mpv and all the rest are at least double near to double of what it's gonna cost and uh, yeah I mean it's got EBS uh, EBD ABS uh, auto crew so yeah I mean uh, you're not gonna go fast in a family car anyway so 
take it as it is and enjoy the space enjoy the leather seats there are some leather seats so look for those because you know you're going to be buying it for your kids presumably because it's an mpv anyway and if you're not you're going to start up a business of moving stuff or you can also buy that so yeah i mean don't disregard proton they, they, they make some really really good products that are just underrated so yeah check out the um Exora CPS if you're looking for a really budget MPV but gives you very very good value. Alright, so we've got sedans, we've got an SUV, we've got an MPV. So I guess what's missing from the red pack is probably a hatchback. And <laughs> If you're looking for a fast-ish hatchback and uh, for cheap money, then there's no denying that the 308 THP facelift is there for you. All right, once again, it's one of those cars that people go, a Peugeot, aren't they going to break down on me somewhere in the road? No, not really, actually. I mean, Peugeots are really good cars. Um, okay, yes. They, at some point you might have to look at the air conditioning system which is a common problem but some people have had the recall and get them fixed so best to ask for that but if not it's always just safe to put around 3000 ringgit away just to fix that and apart from that they're just really good cars and it was one of the first turbocharged hatchbacks you could get in Malaysia um, there's plenty of them because Persia sold many of them um, so there's a lot of specialists around to help you get through this problem but you know like um, my my um, my boss he drives one and he wrote an article saying that it's one of his most reliable cars uh, saying that though he does have two BMWs at home but still you know I've also got a colleague who's got a Peugeot with that same engine um, the RCZ and he doesn't have much problem with it so yeah it's 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 more of a hatred for the distributor of Peugeot previously rather than the car, I think. But yeah, I mean, everything about that car is sweet. It's, uh, it's got that European feel to it. It's got good insulation, so it's not so, doesn't feel so coarse. It's, it feels refined and you really enjoy that turbo. Yeah, you can get a uh, Satya or whatever, you know, but you can get a turbocharged European car for around 18, 16, 20,000 ringgit. Why not? Um, yeah, okay, turbos might also be a problem, I've heard. But like I said, just put some... If you're buying a car 80,000, you put like 5,000 away and stuff. So you can fix that in, in, in future if it does ever go kaboom on you. But um, generally, they are, they are good cars and... The, the, the parts are not so expensive and it's just a shame that people look down on them but this I'm talking about the facelift model so they've probably considered all the problems and fixed it so try to look for the THP facelift model um, don't go look for the other ones because they'll look old anyway because the THP still looks classy it still looks modern and to me it's one of the best um, hatchbacks around and Persia was known for their hatchback, hatchback building pedigree GTIs you know and, and, and stuff like that so don't dismiss them look into it don't be scared of the lion at the hood it's it's okay you know um, but yeah so there you go so we have um, five cars there each different for a different type of person what they're looking for so hopefully that can help and those of like me and my colleagues who prefer not to have a car loan these five cars are best for the budget and value for money all right till next time see you again take care